Who's ready for afternoon tea? Look at this amazing spread I made for us. I'm sitting on the floor because I thought it would be quaint to <laughs> get up a tea party on the floor. Um, but the thing is, is I want you to be able to see what I'm eating. We're gonna have a lovely little tea party. It's gonna be very elegant. How are you guys doing? You having a good day? Is all well in your world? I forgot to open my harp. I should have. I should have played us a little tune on the harp or something. We can maybe do that. All my teaching materials live in this dresser, so we're gonna go through this together in a little bit. But first we must have some tea, as you know. Um, you're gonna see that I have like 3,000 lip balms and lipsticks and everything that live in this dresser along with all of my teaching materials. <laughs> so, I don't know. I just thought it would be fun that we could hang out and just I could accomplish something, you could accomplish something. I have th four little chocolate raisins here left over from yesterday, so we can have some chocolate raisins. Um, I'm just trying to set this up a little bit better so that you can see. Look at the crystals that keep me company during lessons. They've been keeping me company this week. I'm gonna try and put them up here. Got this little teaching mug from one of my students here. And, uh, okay, let's see. I want you to be able to see this glorious afternoon tea. Hmm, that's not really working very well, is it? Let's see, let's move you up. There we go. You know, nothing in my life has been accomplished without a cup of tea nearby. So, there, how about we do that? Let's do that. And pop these lovely crystal friends back here. Hopefully that, you know, they're probably gonna fall in my tea, honestly. But they're so pretty. We should put them there so they can just be fabulous. There, that looks good. And I will just kneel here. Maybe I need to make you a little bit taller. Probably should have done this a little earlier, but I was busy <laughs> cleaning up my closet. I've been trying to do a little cleaning today because I haven't had a lot of time to do to do that recently. And my closet was covered in all of my various seasons of clothes and um, I had to clean that out. So, hello, Guitar, Le guitar Lex. Let me put my glasses on. Where are my glasses? Here they are. Okay. Welcome to the afternoon tea party, darlings. Under this is the tea cozy. <laughs> Isn't this wonderful? I just love this. It keeps your tea hot. I have a handmade blueberry scone. Hey, oh, you're in Russia. That's fabulous, wonderful. A handmade blueberry scone with a little bit of lemon. We have some butter and some honey here. We have some milk and I have made us a cup of Scottish afternoon tea. So I like the Scottish afternoon tea because I like the tea to be um, like I want it to have a full body you know but I don't want it to have too much caffeine because I get a little jittery. So the, af the Scottish afternoon blend from Harney and Sons is wonderful. Wouldn't it be wonderful? Oh my gosh, hey Shri Rung, <laughs> there you are. I was wondering where you've been, how have you been? And we got, I wanna just pour this. We got this little teapot from our little fabulous British shop that's kinda outside our area, about 15, 20 minutes outside of our area. And I just, like the blue, I think blue is the color this year. And I've got a little, can you see? Can you see this little tea, tea thing here? It's for this and we're gonna pour some milk in here oh there we go <laughs> okay cheers my dears cheers here's a cup of tea for you mmm fabulous you know what I can smell this blueberry scone I made this over the weekend and I like to keep them in the freezer. So 
um, I pulled this out of the freezer and um, warm welcome to you from India. Nice. Thank you, Sri Rong, for your lovely comments. Always love seeing your comments. You know what? I need to clean my glasses. I don't think I have my cleaning um, cloth. I usually use my, oh, here, here, we can use this. We can use this. There's a great recipe for blueberry scones, or actually maybe it's for lemon poppy seed scones, but you can do the same thing. You just put blueberries in instead. It's on the website Epicurus. Like if you type in Epicurus scone recipe or lemon poppy seed scone recipe, you'll come up with, with this wonderful recipe. It really does make a difference if you make it in your food processor though. Like look how fabulous this is. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> Skavadi, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> All right, well, I think we should load this up with some butter and some honey. Who else likes their butter? There we go, nice big glob there. Put that on. Wish you could see this a little bit better. I feel like we can't really see this very well. Oh well. Mmm, it's very good. Very, very good. <laughs> what have you guys been doing today? Have you been up to anything? Mmm, guitar Alex is typing to me in Russian. We can't read it, unfortunately. <laughs> But thank you, if it was nice, thank you. I'm sure it was nice, thank you. You know what, it's getting to be that time of year where we have to do taxes. And I'm sorry to bring that up because it's like not a fun topic, but I can see all my tax ledgers and my accounting materials underneath my couch. I keep them under the couch there. And I think I've gotten all the way up through maybe like May or June or July or something like that. So somewhere around the summer, that's where my my accounts have gotten up to. I might have to do a video on, you know, keeping your accounts. <laughs> Not that I, you know, I probably, I kind of do my accounts like a caveman, but I do have a wonderful accountant that helps me. So, oh, bon appetit in Russian. Thank you. Bon appetit. Hmm. <laughs> so, I need your help, you guys. I need you to help me clean up this. I'm gonna show you some of my teaching materials. Maybe I can move you down a little bit more. Let's see, is this better? Let's move down just a little bit more. There we go. I think that it's lopsided. There we go, very professional, very professional. <laughs> There, that looks good. That's better, I think. So we're gonna go through this. This drawer up here, this top drawer, is where all of my active uh, lesson materials are. So all of the things that I pull every day live here. <laughs> One side is for violin stuff, and then violin repertoire, and then all my viola stuff. And then this drawer here, this middle one, is all of my violin books that I have, and I just have so many. And then down here in this lower drawer are all of my viola books. And then under, <laughs> underneath here, I don't know if you can see there, I have some more books. Those are the Royal Conservatory of Music books. I'm using some of them, but not quite all of them in lessons yet. So they're just kind of one pile is for violin, one pile is for viola. And uh, it's just how I keep things organized at the moment. And I, it reminds me of how my music teachers had their drawers. They, I think they all had at least one dresser or maybe several dressers um, full of, you know, various music and everything because you have so many different kinds of students at all different levels that have all these different interests. So you have all this music, you know, that's to kind of um, make things interesting. So it's, I just need to go through it a little bit and, and maybe keep it organized. You, I might pull some things for today's lessons. So um, today is quite an easy day. I only have four classes today. 
in the afternoon and um, I'm looking forward to seeing them. So your violence has a personal apartment in your place. <laughs> yeah, I have a little music room right in here. I'm very lucky, so lucky. I mean, you can see um, from my videos over the years, I've lived in various places and this is the nicest apartment I've ever lived in. I'm very grateful for it. And I'm so grateful to have a little music space. It's truly a magical room. I'll have to give you a tour one day. We'll definitely have to do a tour. I'll just give you a little view over there. You can take a look at it somewhere. The magical music stand. <laughs> so we'll do a tour one day. Oh, and here, the beautiful picture of Sedona. I know you guys love that. I love it too. I wish I could showcase it a little bit more for you in lessons um, and in our live streams, but uh, there's only so much I can do with like angles, you know? So, so yes. What else can we chat about? Maybe I should read you some music history or we could um, pull a thought for the day. Over here on my music stand, I have my little book of quotes from the great and fabulous Terence McKenna, who I love to pieces. This one here, I'll read it for us. It says, claim your place in the sun and go forward into the light. The tools are there, the path is known. You simply have to turn your back on a culture that has gone sterile and dead and get with the program of a living world and a re-empowerment of the imagination. <laughs> So fabulous. I love that. Love, love, love that. Let's have another little bite of scone and enjoy this tea. Let me show you these shoes I bought. Hold on a second. Pause for a fashion moment. Look at these adorable shoes, you guys. I just got them and I just love them. Thank you so much, Britt Common. You have a wonderful practice space. I am, I do. I am just in love with it. I, I would never leave it if it was up to me. <laughs> but um, yeah, it makes me happy to be in this space for sure. Okay. So let's take a look at this. Okay, you wanna see in the drawer? Let's come take a little peek in here. Oh my goodness, look how messy it is. It's so messy. Okay, I need another sip of tea. Okay, we got this. We can do this. Okay, so over here, I have my shoulder rests. You guys know I love the Kuhn original shoulder rest. Oops. A fabulous shoulder rest. I used to really love the Bon Musical. Where are you? There you are. The Bon Musical sh shoulder rest. Um, but you know, times change and everything. So, oh, Britcom, my daughter is an operatic soprano around your age with a very active studio. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. That's awesome. All right. So, first of all, let's look at the organizing the lipsticks, the various. Lipsticks that are here. Um, I've just always been this person that has, no matter where I am, like, thank God I don't have to carry a purse that much anymore because this is how many, you know, various <laughs> lipsticks. They're all the same. They're like all the same color as well. It's just crazy. It's just crazy. So we'll put those somewhere. I'll go through those. I have two three metronomes. This one I decorated with my darling student. So I'm going to put those, you know what, I'll put them down here. I have, oh, I have another lipstick. Okay, another lipstick. Got a bag of crystals. <laughs> a bag of crystals here. So I will just pop those somewhere. I have my little glasses case, I was wondering where that was. So I will just keep this in here so I don't lose it. This is my harp tuning thing. 
This is some wonderful shea butter for my drum, apparently. If I was a good drum mother, I would be putting this um, shea butter on the drum, but I have yet to do that, I have yet to do that. So it's gonna live there. I have a bag of pens and pencils and everything. So there's that. I also have some uh, unopened sage and sweet grass, so you know. And then I have some little wonderful Chinese thingy thingies, thingy thingies. Aren't these lovely? My dad bought these for me and I really don't know what you're supposed to do with them. But I remember in his office, he always had these. Um, it's wonderful. And there's, uh, oh, here, there's a little thing in here. It says, um, health balls date back to the Ming dynasty, 1368 to 1644. We love that, don't we? We love ancient history, love ancient history. Um, the inside is hollow and each ball has a sounding plate inside. One emits a high tone and the other a low tone. The Chinese traditional medicine theory of Jinglo. It believes that the hand contains a network of channels which circulate vital energy. Acupuncture points distributed along these channels are stimulated when the balls are rotated. Oh my goodness, that's wonderful. Let's look at them. This is the higher one. This is the lower one. You just, I guess you just ding them around like this. So, hey Chris, there you are, hey. Yes, another lover of ancient history. I have to show you my books. For all of you guys out there that like history and like ancient history, we will be so close, so close, yeah. So, you will approve of my books. <laughs> okay, um, I have some kind of list here. Okay. And I'm not sure what this is. Oh, a little note. That was very sweet. And, okay, I think we're good to go. So in here, this is my lesson notes. Um, I've got a tattered piece of music here that I love and periodically play. And these are some of the my lesson materials that I just have handwritten and all of this. And then all of these here, these are all my lesson um, notes. And I have another one of these down here. Um, so I'm gonna keep this out because I will use that today to plan today's lessons. Let's not forget about the tea. Hold on, you guys, I can't see you, hold on. There you are. <laughs> Let's have a tea break, a tea break and a scone break again. Kind of getting warm in here, actually. Might have to open a window. This room is funny because sometimes, you know, it's very, it's a very tiny room, and so the ventilation in here is um, just doesn't seem to be the the greatest. So sometimes it gets very, very cold, um, and then sometimes it just gets a little stuffy. Sometimes, so okay. There we go. Is that enough butter? <laughs> I think it's enough butter. Mmm. Brit, mom, you said, I think I said your name right. I might have said your name wrong. Let me just pull you up again. You said that you're Brit Common. My daughter's into herbs and teas. And the, the broom that I have. <laughs> yes, I love that broom. It's magical. It's magical. I love brooms. I love crystals and herbs and things. All things fabulous. Okay. Back to business. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pull this out here. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to kind of pull out the things that I'm going to need to use.
because some things we might not be using in the studio at the moment. So I know I'm using the hour books, blessed hour books. Periodically use this textbook. Definitely need my whiteboard, which I did not clean off yesterday. And here's my tablet. And there, yes, there's the keyboard here. Yeah, I just, um, I don't, I need to play it. I need to play it more. Using the positions book. And the Shradiac, the Blessed Shradiac, we use that. This is the Royal Conservatory of Music's um, preparatory level through level four technique and etudes love this. Our book three, I have some people using that. Um, these Sussman's House books, these are good for like little baby ones, but I don't think at the moment, well, yeah, I actually do have a little, a little one that's using these. Love the essential elements for, you know, starting off. That's very good. Melodious several stumps. And then introducing the positions, third position and fifth position. Okay. But the only one that I'm not actively using is this one. So I'm going to just pop this in this drawer and this one this one has just this is all my violin stuff over here I'm going to put it in a pile of violin technical studies so that's good all right I'm going to put this stuff back in here I'm gonna have to go through that in a little bit and see what I need to pull for today's lessons now we're going to look at the violin uh, repertoire and technique books. Oh, they're just really heavy. We might need to pause for a, a tea break. <laughs> okay, let's have a sip of tea. Pausing for a tea break. Pausing for a tea break. <laughs> All right, and another little bite of scone. Okay, re-energized, here we go. So, I love this book. This, I'm gonna probably, when I, one day when I like pass over to the other side, I'm gonna have this cremated with me because I just love this book so much. <laughs> it's my favorite book. So we'll keep this. Use this quite a bit too. This book is like a wonderful fiddle book. And we're using the violin preparatory level repertoire. Definitely use that. Suzuki, Suzuki. Um, and it, you know, Suzuki is great, but it is it can be extremely boring, but sometimes I like to use them like periodically, like as a little test to just kind of see, you know, how, how we're doing with things. This is an ebook. I just got this. Um, one of my dear students, Alan, sent this to me, and we're studying this fiddle for music. It's actually it's an interesting setup because um, you can see it's you can see the mute, the violin part right on the top, and then there's the guitar chords on the bottom, um, and they're organized in sets. So like if you ever go play somewhere, you have your set one which has two little tunes and set two, which has three tunes and then set three. It's just, it's neat that it is organized in sets. I really like this, that's very neat. Definitely using this as well. These are great. This is kind of like Suzuki one through three, but the repertoire is very interesting. I like this one. Rubber, rubber scales, Suzuki book three. Um, I don't think I'm, well, I probably will use that. The 50 Famous Themes for Violin, like this one. This I haven't had a chance to look at yet. So I do have uh, students that play both violin and viola. Yep. <laughs> I, and, you know, that's super common. When you play the violin, you'll probably also play the viola. If you play the viola, you'll probably also play the violin. So I'm going to keep this out because I haven't looked at it yet. This is yeah, it's okay. Um, I don't know. I just never found it particularly interesting. Probably if there was a recording to play along with it, then um, it would be more interesting. Maybe there is a recording. It, it's for violin and piano. I'm going to just put this away because I'm not particularly inspired by this one at the moment. 
we have the Blessed Bach Sonatas and Partidas. Not using volume two right now. And the Easy Pop Melodies for Violin, these are fun, but I'm not using this right now either. So I'm gonna just put these over here. Okay, so, um, oh my goodness. Let's put these back in the drawer. And I'm gonna put them in this way because I don't usually, I don't use these ones for teaching as much. There we go. I'm gonna just explore this book a little bit more. I really, I like that book so much. And finally these. And now the last pile that we have is the viola pile, but I need to pause for a sip of tea. Oh my goodness, I feel like I'm just breathing so like heavily. It's just, it's clearly, I'm out of shape, <laughs> I'm out of shape. So I did um, recently, for the past, well, I kind of fell off the loop with, with what I was doing. You know, the pandemic just like, ruined everything my schedule with everything in many ways but I'm trying to you know January was the year that I was like I'm gonna just start a new routine that's fabulous that I love that makes me feel healthy because to be honest I've gained like I don't even know how much weight I've gained probably like 10 or 15 pounds uh, maybe more during the pandemic so just because everything changed so much for me I mean, I used to stand and play with my students all day and now I just sit <laughs> and I look at them in the in the camera, you know, all day and I, I just am sitting. So I had to really work on my fitness, keep track of what I was eating and all that. This is a special treat, by the way. I've been, you know, making sure to be careful <laughs> for the week so that I can splurge a little bit with you guys here. But I've just had to be a lot more careful about what it is that I'm eating and being careful about my exercise and all of that. So if you also feel the same, we, you know, it's okay. You just have to start making a little change and go in that direction day after day after day after day. And you'll see the changes happening. Just like when you practice, just like when you play something, you know, often, you know, I remember so many times when I first show Shradiak to my students who've never seen Shradiak before, it can be scary. But if we just do a tiny little bit of it, just like a tiny bit, and then do that over and over and over again, and then we, and then the next lesson we just do a little more, and then it becomes easier, and then all of a sudden you realize you're in the fourth etude, and you know you don't even know what happened. So, you know, there's there's something to be said for just doing a little bit repetitively every day, you know? So, okay, let me catch my breath. This is a great book. This is the viola stuff that we're in right now. Fun with viola, love this book. Um, I use that. Super Studies, also love this. Sh the Blessed Shradiak, love Shradiak. For viola, World Conservatory of Music repertoire, preparatory level. The, I had this for violin, I have it for viola as well. Viola Technique, Viola Level 1, Suzuki 1 and 2, which I do use, and then the Royal Conservatory of Music Preparatory Levels all the way through 4, the Scales, I like this syllabus, this is a great, this is to <clears throat> kind of see every once in a while, I like to give our, give the studio like a little test and, and see if they can like pass the requirements for the specific levels. So, like for example, the preparatory level, you should be able to play from memory um, a piece of two pieces of repertoire from the repertoire book. Let's see. So the preparatory levels book, you should be able to play two pieces from that, and then a etude. I should say an etude, and then scales and arpeggios for the specific level. And then you've got your ear training and um, clap back and play back, which is kind of fun. So it's like if I clap something and you clap it back 
Um, I also like to add ear training on top of that. So we all do ear training in the studio too. So mm -hmm. do you guys know what interval that is? Dun, dun, here comes the bride. So Chris says, I understand your situation. I'm trying to be mindful of what I eat. Yes, <laughs> it's, it is really um, tricky. I also, I saw you said something about meditation. Um, I recently down downloaded the Calm app. You guys, the Calm app is so awesome. They have these wonderful sleep stories that will put you right to sleep. They have like this wonderful background train noise that just, you know, puts you right to sleep. They have wonderful meditations. They have lovely relaxing music. Um, like even you can put it on your TV and you have like a, a, a screensaver with a lovely soundscape. It's just worth every penny. Love the Calm app. Um, I don't think I showed you this. <laughs> I'm using this for viola as well. You saw this for violin, but we're also using it for viola. So I don't think I need to do anything with that at all. I'll just pop this back in here. That was pretty, oh my gosh, there's more. <laughs> there's more. Okay. See, the viola pile is all in one section, whereas the violin pile, there's like two piles. So here's the other half of the music. The Essential Elements for Viola is a wonderful book. Always love the Bach cello suites. Here is the third position and fifth position book. Here, I'm not, not using Suzuki book six right now for Viola, so I'm gonna put that away. That lives down here. Oh, goodness, that drawer is a mess. <laughs> that drawer, we'll have to go through sometime together. That drawer, that drawer is just crazy. The Advanced Viola Scales. Um, viola level etudes five through eight. I'm actually not using this at the moment, so I'm gonna pop that away. Great, sir. Um, double stops and repertoire level five. Bach sonatas and partitas. Solos for young violists. The first repertoire book. Same thing, I'm kind of like, eh, about this one. So I'm gonna put this one away. Don't think anyone's using this at the moment. The Brooke Romance, which I love, but I think I'm not, I'm just kind of not feeling like playing that at the moment. Warming up for the Viola is a nice book, but I think we've, you know, pretty much gone through that. And then just some little, little things here. So I'm gonna put those away. That's good. Got rid of a few books there. Okay, look at this. <laughs> stack of books here. Oh my goodness. Okay. So there's that. All right. Now I have a pile of other things to put back. Remember my 5,000 lipsticks? I have to figure out what to do with those. Um, the sage and the sweetgrass. Do they need to live in this drawer or not live in this drawer? And that is the question. Probably should keep this, you know, nice and just sparse. Keep it Spartan, you know, keep it just kind of, I'm gonna let these live with all of the technological cores because I am terrified of technology. I know I'm the one millennial that is terrified of the computer. And I know that we are currently using technology to communicate, but it still is somewhat stressful for me. So put the sage with that. And I'm gonna just put one metronome in here. Don't need to have three of them in here these as well with the technological things. I still need to clean these out. We might have to do another video like this. The crystals, they should live with these books, I think. Um, they can give the books some nice good vibes, but then maybe the sage should live with the, the books too. Hmm. It does make everything smell good. Okay, reconsidering the sage and the uh, sweet grass, they're gonna live with the books here. And the crystals. There we go. Okay, my little bag of pens and pencils, I don't need to keep in this drawer because I have a lovely cup of pens and pencils. Um, this is a sweet little Christmas gift. So I'm gonna just put this in the other drawer. The secondary drawer here is just becoming like the, the just, it's, you can see it's kind of a mess in here. So we'll have to, We'll have to clean that at some point. Um, I'm gonna keep my harp 
tuner in here because I use this every day to tune the beautiful harp. The shea butter for the drum, I'm not going to keep there. I'm going to keep that clearly in this junk drawer, which is the violin repertoire <laughs> stuff that I'm not using at the moment. And the magical little, these are so pretty. I just love these. I probably should put these on display somewhere. So maybe I'll just leave them out. I'll just put them over here for a moment. Let those sit there. Um, and then this is the hardest question. <laughs> this is the hardest question of the day, you guys, is what lipstick should I keep? Okay, so let me show you. This is my favorite lipstick. It's by Bobbi Brown. It is an artist, an art stick in the color this. <laughs> uh, this is my absolute favorite color. This is the color that I always have on my lips. So this one, definitely we will keep. I'll just keep it put on the stand there. Um, also need to have this because I have actually the most chapped lips on the planet. And I really wish I didn't. I hate having chapped lips. I hate it. So then I have this. I actually really like this. This is a lip like plumping gloss and it's actually really hydrating. It's kind of sticky and I like that. So I'll keep this. Watch me just save all the, <laughs> all the lipsticks. Um, this is a wonderful lipstick from Shantikai and this is like a more all natural brand. Lovely color. I'm almost out of this. You see how everything's like the same color. Also got a red lipstick. This is from Laura Mercier. It is a lovely red. If you need a red lipstick, check out Laura Mercier Dominate. This is a fabulous color. Also, is this from Laura Mercier? It is. This is a lovely red color as well. It's like a dark red color. Um, I'm gonna just, and then I have like three, three more colors. So I think I'm gonna just put these away in my makeup bag and just stick with three. Um, oh, I'm exhausted. <laughs> so yeah, the, you know, the red, it does complement my, my red frames. I love these glasses, by the way. These are from, um, Warby Parker and they are the Daisy in the size medium. Warby Parker Daisy, lovely. Warby Parker, I have to update my prescription because I, you know, I used to not have to wear them, but now I just can't like see anything without them at all. At least if I'm reading music, if I go around day to day <clears throat> when I'm not working, you know, or teaching, I won't wear them. But if I have to see like something more precisely, I have to, I have to wear them. So anyway. I hear dogs barking. They put a little dog park right below us. So if somebody's upset, somebody's unhappy. Mm. That was lovely, you guys. <laughs> Thank you so much for helping me with my cleaning. Let me see what time it is. 2.56. So I have to get prepared for today's lessons. Um, tomorrow is Friday the 29th. And... Um, we are gonna be getting together for our little musical time on Zoom. It's our virtual studio circle and you can join. You just have to be on Patreon. So that's just, it's like, it's, you know, it's not like this. It's actually a, a gathering where, where my students in this Patreon um, practice playing for each other or just, you know, we'll listen to each other play and it's just an hour, it's lovely. So I'm excited for that. Um, the following week, February 4th is a Thursday and that's our group class, our violin group class. And I'm using that hour book to, um, you know, do the group class. So if, I would love for you to be there. Like come to the group class. <laughs> you come to the group class. It's Thursday, February 4th. The, all the information about group classes and, and the, all the other like things that we're doing, all the fun, you know, community things that we're doing. They're all on my website. It's violin, viola, masterclass please go check that out. I'd love for us to be, you know, more of a community to do things, fun things together. Um, and I'm going to bid you adieu. Thank you for keeping me company for our afternoon tea party. 
and I will see you soon. Oh, also, sorry, I'm the worst person at saying goodbye, but I think I'm changing our live stream because Wednesday night, I am so tired by the end of the night. So I think that we're gonna like keep this Thursday time for a little while um, and just see what happens. I also would like to record some like actual videos for you <laughs> because I feel like my live streams are just very, you know, they're just me babbling and I'm not helping you in any way musically. So um, I need to record some, some more like, you know, helpful videos for you. So I'm hoping to, to have some time to do that. Um, but anyway, so I will see you on next Thursday for our little live stream, hopefully. And the studio circle tomorrow night, if you can come there. And yeah, you guys, lots of love. Now I bid you farewell and adieu. And remember that you're a magical earthling and I'll see you soon. <laughs> Bye. Oops, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs>